We're proud to present Ben Paluba with Logic Works. Please give him a warm welcome. Sure, sure. Hi, everybody. Hello to all five of you. How's it going? Uh, today, we're going to be talking about migrating compliant workloads to AWS. Um, going to do a little walkthrough of case study of a company that we worked with called Cardnox. They're uh, uh, payments processors. So we're going to go through the process, talk a little bit about um, why you should be not afraid to migrate compliant workloads to AWS and talk about some tips and tricks and methods uh, for how to do so. Um, so just quickly, we'll get into it. Um, a little bit about LogicWorks. Uh, we're a, an AWS Premier partner. Um, we specialize in a number of things, but uh, one of the things that we specialize in is migrating compliant workloads and dealing with compliance and security in AWS. Um, some of our big focuses are cloud, mig cloud migration, cloud operations, and cloud optimization. So figuring out how to get into the cloud, uh, figuring out how to operate in the cloud, and then dealing with optimizing your, your platform, your environment for the cloud, taking advantage of cloud native services, improving your CI CD workflows, and getting things really dialed in to take most advantage of working in public cloud, and especially in AWS. 75% uh, of IT decision makers say it's more complex to manage privacy and data protection regulations in the cloud than on-premises. So it's definitely an impression of a lot of IT leaders that there's a lot more to be dealt with in cloud. I think a lot of this is because they're just used to dealing with their on-premises environments, don't really have experience in dealing with managing data privacy, managing regulations, managing compliance in the cloud. It's not that it's more complex. You're just dealing with a different set of tools, a different set of methodologies. But in essence, the concepts are the same. You're still trying to provide the same types of protections, and you're still trying to uh, achieve the same results. The compliance standards aren't any different, whether you're on premises or in a colo or you're in AWS. Uh, you're just having to deal with using AWS tools and different methodologies and approaches, right? 53% of IT decision makers don't think that their organizations have a proactive approach to managing compliance in the cloud. That's probably true, and that's why we're talking about this today. Um, there's, there are a lot of misconceptions and misperceptions about what it takes to manage compliance in the cloud and what it takes to achieve proper security and compliance controls in cloud. So we're going to dive into a little bit about that now. Um, some of the things that we're going to go through, this is sort of our agenda for our talk today, uh, to dial in on what it takes to ensure compliance and meet compliance standards in the cloud are right here. We're going to understand the shared responsibility model for working in public cloud and specifically in AWS, so how you versus AWS are responsible for which pieces of the puzzle and uh, you know, for, for uh, how that breakdown influences how you have to approach uh, compliance in public cloud. Um, we're going to talk about mapping the regulations for specific compliance requirements to tools and methods uh, in AWS. We're going to talk about meeting basic security requirements that are sort of table stakes that have nothing to do with a specific uh, compliance standard like PCI or HIPAA or High Trust, but just making sure that if you are adhering to those standards and you're achieving compliance, that you're also buttoning up the basics of security and cloud. And uh, we're going to talk about automating compliance versus trying to deal with managing compliant environments manually and uh, regularly assessing your compliance situation to make sure that you remain in compliance and don't uh, do what many people do is that, you know, by a few months into having passed an audit, their environment may no longer be compliant. So we want to make sure that we're operating and maintaining a secure and compliant environment as we move forward. So. Uh, we're going to dive into talking about a case study that uh, LogicWorks developed with a customer called Cardnox. Cardnox is an omni-channel payments processor. So they deal with taking all different kinds of payment transactions, credit cards, et cetera. Uh, they're a very developer-friendly um, platform that people can use to process all types of payments. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're a pretty cutting-edge system for chip transactions and, and every other type of payment. They, they, uh, 
They came to us looking to do migration into AWS. Um, we're going to break down a little bit about how that went and how we worked with them to achieve PCI compliance in AWS. Uh, Cardinox was facing a number of challenges that had to be dealt with it was sort of the reasoning behind their migration into AWS. They were experiencing high class problems, right? A large influx of growth, many uh, customers wanting to migrate or use their platform. And they had to accommodate that. Their legacy hosting environment, their colo, was just not suitable for agile development approach. They wanted to achieve true CI CD and they wanted to just be much more flexible. Um, again, they couldn't really scale properly in terms of uh, taking advantage of the types of resource scalability that AWS provides, being able to scale with demand uh, in their colo, and they were really looking to achieve that as well by migrating to AWS. And they, they just felt their team was spending a lot of time on server maintenance and just dealing with uh, platform and, and the underlying environment rather than focusing on developing new features, new tools, new things that actually help them sell their product uh, and, and obviously they need, because they're a payments processor, to achieve PCI compliance. Oop. All right, some of, the, some of the steps that Cardnox took that we assisted them with uh, were migration and preparation, basically going through the business case, understanding the strategy uh, and, and business reasoning, tech, tech and business reasoning behind migrating into AWS. Uh, doing then a deep dive on portfolio discovery and planning, going through all of the elements that are currently in their environment on-prem or in their colo, really getting a good inventory of that, understanding what's there, breaking down all the dependencies and interrelationships between the different components of the applications that they're migrating and developing a solid plan for getting that stuff from colo or on-prem into cloud, into AWS. Uh, next step then is, is design of the uh, environment in AWS, design of their public cloud environment, uh, as well as the actual migration, uh, testing, uh, validation, configuration, all the rest of it, moving on to actually operating the environment. So dealing with how they, over time, are going to conduct backups, patching, monitoring, and all the things that you need to do to keep your environment compliant and to make sure that you're operating a well-architected environment in a well-operated way in AWS. So that was sort of the the end-to-end -end process that we went through with them from the very beginning of strategic planning and, and understanding their IT strategy and why they want to do this as a business to the very end of making sure that we can operate that environment in, in the proper ways to achieve ongoing compliance, security, data protection, and all the rest of that in AWS. So right, right here is one of the keys to doing that in the way that LogicWorks builds environments and in the way that Cardnox chose to operate in AWS. So th what we're showing here is the management hub, basically, that we create uh, that houses all of the shared services that people are going to use so that we don't have to replicate services in different environments, different VPCs throughout the uh, overall AWS environment. We have a central sort of command and control plane here that we create as this management hub. And this deals with all of the security tools, networking tools, Active Directory, uh, you know, your bastion hosts, and all the other things. This is sort of the center of a hub and spoke model where this is sort of a hub in the wheel and all your other VPCs that house your different levels of your environment, say your development environment, your testing environment, your QA environment, your production environment, all become VPCs that are tied to this and can be operated from this central hub. So I don't want to dwell too much on this. Just a quick note on this, uh, for environments that are at larger scale now, AWS has a landing zone product and program where they've abstracted this whole hub and spoke model to the account level, where you can run, pretty run efficiently, a hub and spoke multi-account structure, which is something that we've been doing for people who need even greater scale. Uh, so once again, ensuring compliance on AWS, we're just going to dig into this a little bit. That's understanding the shared responsibility model, figuring out how to map uh, compliance regulations to tools, meeting your basic security requirements and figuring out that not leaving any of those doors open, covering your table stakes, automation as sort of a key trigger for compliance, and regularly assessing compliance, making sure that you stay in compliance over time. 
Okay, so we're going to just talk a little bit about the shared responsibility model. 69% of companies believe they can place all responsibility for compliance on cloud providers. This is a common misperception. I mean, uh, AWS provides many tools and they do back up all of the pieces of the puzzle on their end and they're securing all of the hardware and backing infrastructure and network that sits behind the cloud, but security of the cloud that you operate is your responsibility. So everything from the OS level up you know, throughout everything that your application does is your responsibility or your responsibility with a partner like LogicWorks. So right here is a little bit of a breakdown on how that works. And you can see here, you know, we have, we have AWS and what they're responsible for. They're responsible for security of the cloud. So they provide the cloud, basically everything up through the hypervisor level. Um, and then security in the cloud, everything dealing with, with your customers, their data, your platform, your application, the operating systems, the networking and firewall configurations, you know, how, you're, how you're dealing with uh, encryption and the rest of that, that is all on you, is something that you're responsible for. So AWS cannot help you really. I mean, they, they help by providing tools to use, but they cannot ensure your compliance or ensure security and protection for your data or your customer's data in the cloud. That is your situation to deal with. And LogicWorks helps people to manage and control that situation. So one of, one of the big things that you'll want to do when understanding how to break down that shared responsibility model is to either create or purchase or get from a partner a responsibility matrix. So just outlining which pieces of the environment you're responsible for, what a partner like LogicWorks may be responsible for, and where things lie in AWS's hands. And so that's something that you're going to want to create basically to cover all the basic security situations as well as any compliance uh, standards that you have to adhere to. Um, you're going to want to map the compliance regulations, specific compliance regulations to controls and methods that you can use in the cloud. So you're going to want to look at what those things are here. Uh, we have a few things like ensure your elastic load balancer logging is enabled, ensure S3 bucket access is enabled on uh, for CloudTrail. Just making sure that you can map specific PCI or HIPAA or high trust requirements to actual actionable controls that you can institute in AWS, right? Uh, then, like we were talking about before, you want to make sure that you are meeting your basic security requirements. Uh, things like encrypting EBS volumes, you know, making sure MFA is being used, uh, making sure that you have password reset policies and recycle policies. All of the things that you really want to do to well operate any environment. So any environment that you are going to operate, whether or not you're applying uh, to any compliance standards, is going to need to have these sort of table stake security requirements in place. Uh, so in terms of automation, we want to talk about automating compliance and how we use automation to ensure compliance and security and protection of data. So 67% of IT leaders would prefer an automated approach to infrastructure compliance, and that absolutely makes sense because the way we see it, it's an essential part of operating a compliant environment. It's not something that you might want to do. It's something that you shouldn't consider going without. Uh, because if we look at the difference between a manually operated environment and an automated environment, you have a lot more chance for failure and problems and human error in a manual environment. What you want to do is to automate everything and be able to change your code, change your templates, and deal with everything through a configuration management system and not rely on humans to know that they have to change something and to go in and manually maintain instances or servers or however we want to describe these things. If you're doing that, you're pretty much doing it wrong and you're going to set yourself up for some massive problems and failures. Uh, it's, it's the old cattle versus pets situation that people talk about. You definitely want to make sure that you're operating with cattle, things that you can basically turn on and off, have immutable infrastructure to whatever degree possible, and not treat your servers and instances like pets that have to be maintained and cared for in that kind of a way. The way we achieve that with automation is through three things, templates, config management, and scanning. Um, so these three things together, you want to make sure that you are templatizing your infrastructure as code uh, using tools like CloudFormation or Terraform to be able to write code and not maintain servers, right? We want to be able to maintain all of this infrastructure, all of the services, and define all those things in a templatized way with code rather than with human manual intervention. Configuration management we're using to 
deal with all things from the OS level up. So managing your actual instances and ensuring that when you spin, that, spin up new instances, destroy an instance, recreate an instance, it comes back up with all the necessary packages, agents, tools installed. And you can control that from a singular point, like by using Puppet or Chef or Ansible or any one of the many configuration management tools out there, you can ensure that you're always going to be installing and running the same thing over and over in this immutable infrastructure concept. And then scanning on an ongoing basis just to make sure you're using tools like AWS Config or Macy or a tool that we've developed on top of those tools called LogicWorks DLP, making sure that data is secured in your environment, making sure that the actual compliance standards that you have templatized and planned and automated are actually there and working and doing what they're supposed to do. It's sort of like an extra check on you and on the environment. Uh, we talked about regularly assessing compliance. Here we have a stat that 44.6%, that's very accurate, of compliance fall out of PCI compliance within nine months of validation. So oftentimes things change in an environment. You do your best to keep them in compliance and make sure that everything is adhered to. And even if you are using automation, you never know when a development team may roll out something new, somebody spins up something that someone wasn't aware of, and something just isn't secured or isn't compliant. So every now and then, we would say at least you know, every half a year, you want to go through and run an assessment, run a game day, do things that are going to ensure that you're staying compliant so that if you are in a situation where you have to have an audit, you're always prepared for that and you're always audit ready. Uh, LogicWorks provides uh, some compliance assessment services that can help with that. Um, and we run these for our customers who are managed service customers regularly, and we run them for people who are new to LogicWorks trying to assess their situations. So with that, we, we run a scan that will analyze an environment uh, and, and uh, basically give us some outputs in an automated fashion so that we can see what's going on in the environment. We'll analyze uh, you know, those against other control sets that you give us. We will interpret those reports, put together something that your team can then digest and absorb uh, that'll give you a good idea of where you stand in relation to uh, whatever compliance standard that you're looking to achieve. Uh, and then, if necessary, LogicWorks can help you to remediate any issues that are found within the, the, that compliance assessment. Uh, some of the frameworks that we can deal with are PCI, HIPAA, SOC2, ISO, GDPR, SIS, NIST. Um, you know, we deal with things like your console and account settings, networking, off, IAM, MFA, encryption log, the whole thing. So it's actually a very comprehensive assessment that we do perform, and it really helps you to just understand where you stand and where your gaps might be and to help you get yourself either back into compliance or to make sure that you're keeping in compliance. Uh, basically, here's just a little snapshot of what you get. We do a, like a very high-level executive summary report as part of this assessment, and then you also will get a full, very detailed set of findings that come into very granular information about every single control in the specific compliance standard that you're looking to deal with. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. If anybody has any questions, I'll be here. Uh, I think we've got a couple of minutes left, or uh, I'm glad to chat afterwards if you want to grab me. Yeah. Thank you.